Historic Hereford. That's our postcard today from the county of Herefordshire. We're standing by the River Wye, which is just down there. We're in Hereford. Do we presume, Jeremy, the reason why Hereford began is because of this river? Yes. Hereford holds a strategic position. We're actually up on quite an elevated bank here, Russell, which always gave it its defence. There are also two crossing points on the River Wye here, fords, which were early ways of getting over the river from the Bishop's Meadow on the far side. And although Hereford didn't start here initially, it started out with an Iron Age hill fort outside Hereford at Cretton Hill. The Romans came here. They didn't actually live in Hereford, um, but they certainly used the fords. But Hereford, in years gone by, was of major importance. It had a castle complex here as big as Windsor Castle. And yet you go round to Castle Green now and there's nothing but a bowling green and a, sort of a bit of a lumpy sort of embankment. Absolutely. It's um, after the Civil War, which hit Hereford badly. This is the Second Civil War between the Royalists and the Parliamentarians. Hereford was a Royalist city. And once Hereford had fallen to the Parliamentarians under Colonel Birch, the castle complex wasn't really necessary any longer. And the stone and rubble was used in buildings and road maintenance. So it all has disappeared now. Where does the cathedral fit in then? The cathedral dates back to 1079. So as soon as the conquest had taken place and William had, his, had entrenched himself here, Remember, he came to this area, he colonised the whole of this area, always had the problems with the Welsh, but one of the main structures he wanted to put up to show the grandeur of the time was to create his wonderful cathedrals. The Normans were obsessed with Christianity and the putting up of cathedrals, and we have another five smaller churches to go along with it. Lovely little roadways and streets. One building, in fact, two buildings I want to ask you about. One is, I think, in Hightown, and it's the most stunning black and white timbered house. Yes. Tell me about that. Black and white because the Victorians caused these buildings to be painted black <laughs> and white. Prior to that, they were all natural. But we're in the black and white area here, north of Hereford. We have a lot of black and white buildings. The old house in Hightown, grade one listed, built in 1621. And over the doorway, we can see the original coat of arms for possibly the Guild of Butchers from London. We think that a butcher from London retired and had the, the old house built for himself. Very interesting portrait on the front of the building is uh, the Green Man of Hereford, an old pagan fertility symbol, the rebirth in spring, Russell, which you'll see all over Herefordshire. It's a jetted building. On, that means that each subsequent floor is jetted out over. Some people saying that each of the jetties gives extra uh, weather protection from the ailments. Uh, uh, other people say that it gives a greater floor area as you go up. But it was really jetting was a sign of wealth. So this man who had the old house built uh, in 1621 obviously had a lot of wealth made through the butcher's trade. I'll also mention this glorious building down St Owen Street in terracotta. Seems to be like a Victorian Gothic palace to me. Yes. H.A. Shears was the architect for the town hall there. Very much Edwardian, turn of the cent last century. Oh, Edwardian. I, yes, yes, 1902. Very interesting building because it holds all the, um, uh, obviously the mayor's parlour, and the early charters are kept in there. Hereford's great charter of 1189, given by Richard the Lionheart, um, basically giving the people of Hereford the right to put up their own defences at the cost of £40 a year, which was directly paid to the king. Is that why the crest of Hereford has got three lions? Or? Yes, yes. In the centre of the crest, you see the three lions of Richard the Lionheart. 